Last video, I tore the engine down. Spoiler alert, I found some damage. This engine had suffered from infamous ringland failure, where the metal between the piston ring breaks off the piston. This happened due to extra power, probably a leaking PCV system, and of course, time. From the looks of the motor, I didn't maintain it as well as I thought I did, so I'm sure that didn't help either. Regardless, I'm going to be building this engine back up. I've already gotten all the parts back from the machine shop, so everything should be ready to go. Before I get into final assembly, I need to check a few things. Time to check rod clearances. Because I'm using new ARP rod bolts, these are meant to be tightened a bit more than the originals. So you're supposed to have your rods reconditioned. So you can see here that my rods have this nice new uh, surface finish on here. That's because my machinist took off just a little bit of material from here and here, which closed up the circle here. And then he went in and reground it to the perfect size um, with these bolts torqued down to, uh, to spec. So the reason for doing that is because if you go to bolts that have more torque on them, uh, you could wind up actually constricting this hole slightly if you don't regrind it. So that has been done. So now it's got the perfect hole size for these rod bolts. Now I'm going to pop some new bearings in and uh, check the clearances to the journals and make sure we're all good there. So I am noticing some burrs, like right here especially. That's from the grinding process. Uh, I need to file that down because that's going to throw off my reading so it doesn't clamp enough. You'd think you could trust your machinist to notice that sort of thing, but unfortunately it seems that's not typically the case. This is not final assembly, but still. Usually, every other kind of engine, you would be able to do this with the crank installed and you wouldn't have to worry about things turning for the most part, but that is not the case here. So this is actually quite irritating to do. I want to put the rod on here like this, but I don't want the plastic gauge to slip and fall, so I'm going to put a small amount of assembly lube on here and then, and then stick my plastic gauge on it like such. See, now it's stuck to the bearing and it's not going to go anywhere. I can turn it upside down and it's fine. It stays there. So now I'm going to make sure the orientation is correct. There's not really anything visible there. So I've got to go over here. To see anything. All right, grab our gauge. Yep, that's a pretty healthy 1.5 thousandths of an inch. That's pretty good. It's a little bit under 1.5, which I think is good. That is very consistent with all the other readings I've been getting. Every single one of these has been 1.5 thousand, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. So now I'm checking for adequate crush, which really just means that these bearings are being pushed in place properly so they won't spin. So I'm just going to put one bolt in here. and. Tighten it down a little bit. And on the other side where there is no bolt, there's a small gap here. That's because the bearings are crushing and it wants to push the cap up like this. Uh, so I can see in there there's a pretty sizable gap. I measured 10 thousandths for the other one. It wasn't fully torqued down on this side, it's just kind of approximate, but really what I'm look looking for is just to make sure that these bearings aren't too loose and they're not going to spin. And uh, there is definitely plenty of crush going on there. So that's good. 
Okay, let's check the main bearing clearances. Uh, I'm going with king bearings. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of obvious, I think, where each of these are meant to go. A little strange, there's no tab. Right. I guess it's held in place by plenty of friction anyways. Just do a little bit of oil. Do not turn the crankshaft. Okay. So obviously I don't need to do any gasket material just for when I'm plastic aging it. This is just to see what the clearances are, so need for any of that. So now, there's a whole torquing procedure. This is just the exploded view that shows you all the bolts so you know where the right ones go. Some of them have washers, some of them have sealing washers that you're supposed to replace. Um, you know, I'm not going to cover this whole sequence in detail because the factory service manual uh, actually gives you all the information you need. So if you're doing this job, you can just reference the service man manual yourself. Uh, but basically I need to do bolts from both sides of the case and I have to do them in the correct order with the correct uh, and the correct amount of torque each time. I'm not sure that it matters for just plastic aging. I could probably just crank down it, but you know, I want to do a uh, practice run anyways for when I actually assemble the engine. It all stuck to my crank and not to the bearings. Interesting. All the bearing clearance is checked out, so it's time to move on to the rod assembly. The procedure here isn't too complex, but I do have to worry about rod bolt stretch. This is done to ensure an accurate clamping load on the rods. First I make sure everything is all clean and lubed up, then I use a stretch gauge to measure how much the rod bolts are stretching. Take some measurements. I increase the torque in steps until they're in the right range, about seven to eight thousandths of an inch. I do this for all four rods, making sure the position and orientation is correct, and then I can move on to the block. Okay, so now I'm almost ready to drop the crank in this half of the case. Uh, first, I am going to try and clean out these cylinders because it's very important that those be as clean as possible. Uh, I'm going to start with this just so I can see what's coming out of it and then finish off with a microfiber so I don't leave behind any crap. Pieces of lint. So of course I already did this wrong. I have to put the crank in this side first and then put this side on because this O-ring has a groove here but it does not have a groove on this side. So 
orange o-ring definitely goes right here. I'll put some oil on that. Down. With the crank installed, it's time to put the case halves together. I need to add the sealant between the halves, which is a stressful process. There's a specific route outlined in the service manual, and if it isn't done right, it'll leak. Forever. Moving quick is important too because the stuff starts to dry. Pro tip, get all your bolts in order first so you don't have to look for them while the sealant dries. The case is now all bolted up so I can move on to installing my JE pistons, but there's an issue. These pistons are higher compression than I thought, and I noticed because the dish volume is smaller than the old pistons. These were spec'd at 8.5 to 1 for the STI, and the shop I got them from didn't notice. These, with the cylinder heads I have, will actually be at 9.1 to 1. These are the lowest compression ratio of pistons JE makes, and I don't want to swap to a different manufacturer because my block was already bored to match these. So, long story short, I'm using these pistons anyways. I will be going with thicker head gaskets to reduce some of this, and maybe flex fuel as well at some point to help reduce detonation. But that's not the end of the piston problems. When my machinist bought them to match the cylinders, he didn't notice they were labeled by bank. The right banks are labeled 3 and 4, but they're supposed to be 3 and 1. I simply swapped two pistons, making sure JE's markings were respected. This actually wasn't too big of a deal. The diameter of the pistons I had to swap were identical, so the piston and wall clearances should be the same. With that out of the way, I can move on to the piston assembly. Before I get the oil control ring in here, there's a little tang right here that's got to be in one of these grooves, and my manual right here tells me which direction all the grooves go. Next I'm doing the compression rings. The letters go up. Top compression ring, letters go up. Now I've got this snap ring installed. Uh, that has to be changed. We install the one that is not accessible from the access ports on the engine block, obviously. I'm going to oil up these rings a bit. It's worth mentioning that the machine shop already gapped my rings and I quickly tested that and verified that the gap was correct. Now I've got to rotate the engine over until I see this connecting rod lines up nicely in here. It's going to be hard for both of us to get in here, but I'll do the best I can. And it's pretty good. I'm going to oil up this first, actually. Try and get it oriented as close as possible. It's a bit hard to see, but you've got the piston as well lined up with that rod as I can. The rod likes to kind of flop around a little bit. If you reach your hand in from the oil pan area, you can move the rod left and right. And I'm gonna to have to do that while I'm pushing the pin in. Grab my piston pin, put a little spinge of oil on it. Put the rod sort of positioned first. Feed into the piston. And you can kind of, kind of have to, oh, there it is. Oh, that was easy. That's the easiest one I've done so far. 
Sometimes you have to wedge the pin left and right to get the piston to wiggle a little bit. That is in. Now you can see that retaining ring in there. It looks fairly nicely seated and everything. And I, I heard it click into place, so that's good. So now the short block is uh, mechanically put together, at least. It's telling me to do some seals and stuff, but let's see how it turns over. For some reason, my rebuild kit came with three rear main seals. Maybe they're expecting me to mess it up twice? <laughs> I hope not. Well, I wound up getting it in using a roll of painter's tape and a big square of sheet metal. Just able to hammer it The rear cover also needs some sealant following the manual. These holes in the front for the wrist pins have these plugs, they get a new washer, and you're supposed to use some gasket maker on them, so I'm using Mega Black, high temp silicone gasket maker. Let's squeeze some of this on here. Now it gets torqued to 52 foot pounds. good. We're going to rinse and repeat for the other one. There's one more in back and then the last one doesn't use one of these plugs. It uses a, uh, a cover with a gasket instead. I don't know what these plugs get torqued to but I'm going to do like 30 or so just to make sure they're tight. Next the flywheel has to go on so I can put the engine stand bracket on. Otherwise I won't be able to get the flywheel on until it's on the hoist. All right, let's get this thing back on the engine stand. Ugh, it's not too bad. My old oil pump had some wear, so I decided to be safe and go with a new one. This, of course, also needs some sealant applied. You have to be careful not to fold the front seal over when inserting the oil pump. It took a couple tries for me. Okay. Now, I probably should have gotten the bolts ready, and I have no idea where they are, so that's smart. The water pump thankfully uses a gasket, so there's no sealant necessary. Finally, to complete the short block, I went with the ARP head studs. 
These are a no-brainer for higher power engines. I had some trouble getting them to thread in by hand, so I spent a little while cleaning and drying the threads. So the insulation guide doesn't say that you're supposed to apply any lubricant or oil, but I read their FAQ online and they do say you can use you can use their lube for the threads. So uh, that's what I'm going to do because some of these are a little bit sticky going in. Um, they don't require much torque, but they're just binding a smidge. Um, so that they're a little hard to put in by hand or I have to use like a hex wrench or something. So for example, this one is getting a little difficult to turn by hand. But it is bottomed up. And then I'm just going to do a little, little tiny snug just to make sure it's actually bottomed out. Because it is crucial that these are perfectly bottomed up. So all those are looped up, not torqued, but just snug. So I'm do the other side. And with that, the short block is done. There's still the oil pickup and pan to install, but these will get installed later. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and see you in the next one where the rest of the engine gets reassembled.